Welcome back everybody, it's Seymour Mac, and today I became a FAA licensed pilot. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to Seymour Mac. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Tell your story. I'm listening. And uh, you, you have to uh, put in your old uh, service tag number there, and they yeah. they give you a link. Yeah, and they you can, can recover USB. Can't you just do that for free now? Oh, we're going to take the pilot exam. Got my little notebook, right? I got Pop Pop. Good luck. Thank you. Boy. Bye, Dad. Thank you. Okay, bye, Dad. When I get out of there, I'll let you know how awesomely I've passed. Or, or failed. <laughs> Positive thoughts. Here we go. I don't even think I took my keys. Oh wait, yeah, I have my keys. Stewart. Stu. Stewart. Meow. He doesn't care. <laughs> All right, so we're off to take our FAA Part 107 pilots exam. So that we fly the drone commercially, all right? Listen, you already know this because you've watched a thousand of these F01, F01. Part 107, drone pilot, you already know. You need to have a pilot license, a legit pilot license. So we are going, but first we need to... Let's buckle up. Not even filming that. I'm an idiot. So how far we got? We got 44 minutes. It's 9:20. Gotta stop for some Dunkin', which is probably a really bad idea, actually, considering I haven't I haven't got poop yet today. And once you're in the testing center, taking the test, that's it. There's no stopping for a doobie. So this is probably a bad idea. Maybe I'll have enough time to bless their bathroom with my grace. But we got 44 minutes. The test is at 10.30. It says I'm gonna arrive at about 10.03, which is perfect. Give me a little bit of time to settle in, maybe drop a deuce, and uh, definitely just look over my notes. Hey, Sue. How you doing? All right, how you doing? Good. Don't want that. I know, I'm so basic. Can I get a straw from you? Yeah. All right, thank you so much. You have a good nice. one. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, you can tell I come here way too much. We're off to or the Wilkes-Barre uh, Airport to take our drone pilot exam, and I'm gonna concentrate on driving, so that way this doesn't become a I crash my truck video. We made it to the test center, I believe. Definitely at the airport, but this might be at the wrong building. So I'm gonna figure out which building I gotta go into, and just as I suspected, Dunkin' Donuts was a bad idea. So hopefully I have enough time to drop a doobie. We'll see. I'll see you when I'm done with the test. I just passed my pilot exam. Woo! Over here at Valley Aviation in uh, Wilkes-Barre. Very nice, everybody in there was Super nice, the bathroom could use a little work though. I called it, man, this Duncan run right before this without duping before I left the house, bad idea. But I was able to get here with enough time to dupe at the test facility, so many apologies for that. Sorry about that, but you take one, you leave one. You know what I'm saying? So we passed, feel good, we're about to head back home, and I'll see you in the studio. That's right, today I became an FAA licensed pilot, that is true. For unmanned aircraft, whenever I tell anybody now that I'm an FAA licensed pilot, they look at me with excitement and wonder and how could I be so successful and you, you're a pilot? I, I love flying in planes. Then I let them know it's for unmanned aircraft and they're still very intrigued. They're like, unmanned aircraft, that's just amazing. And then in a minute when they realize it just means drones, 
I get scoffed at and laughed at. But this video is not going to be a study video. This is strictly going to be what to expect in 2020, what my experience was like at the specific test center that I went to in Northeast PA, and also some tips on what to study, some of the things that I found out that I should have paid a little bit more attention to and I just didn't. I will link to some of the videos that I used to study in the description below, so please check those out. All right, so what can you expect when taking the test? in 2020. Here's my experience, here's what I dealt with, and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of comfort in knowing that it's really not that difficult. So passing the test and taking the test, a lot easier than registering for the test, at least in my experience. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to go to psionline.com, and this is where you're going to pay and register for your test. You're also going to be able to look for your test location nearest to you. You're going to see in the list that they have times and dates available under some locations and not under others. The ones that show an extra fee, which the test is ultimately going to cost you $160, those are the only test centers that are going to be available to you. So just pick whatever is convenient for you. Make sure that you arrive early. Bring your study notes with you. Have whatever YouTube videos you are watching available to you so that way you can run through some of the information right before you go into the test center, kind of cram it back into your head. I did show up early, but I had to drop a deuce, so I actually didn't have time to cram right before the test. I did take care of business, and I passed the test, so it all worked out for me, but I would definitely suggest arriving early just to cram a little bit. Make sure you don't do what I did. Don't run out of the house in the morning, go grab a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee, butter pecan latte, and then, you know, show up at the test center ready to drop deuces. You may or may not be able to do that depending on how much time you have. Something that I do want to talk about is if you are in Northeast PA, and you plan on taking this test at the Wilkes-Barre Airport at Valley Aviation, I'm just going to go over my personal experience with the proctor there, the people there in general, how did I find the place okay, yada, yada, yada. I went to Valley Aviation is where that test center is located at. When I arrived at my location, okay, here, don't fall for the same trick I fell for. You're going to pull into the parking lot. You're going you're gonna to park your car, okay? You're going to look around at a couple buildings. You're going to see like this old rundown building in front of you. Looks like you definitely don't belong there. You're going to see this other little building that kind of looks like it could be a test facility over to the left. But when you read the sign, you're going to realize that's not it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn around and you're going to go ask the lady who works at the flower tent in that parking lot where to take the exam. She's going to basically tell you to turn back around and in that building where it looks like you don't belong actually you got to walk around to the other side of that building that's exactly where it is so that's valley aviation i spent about five minutes trying to figure out if i was in the right place so thank you to that lady very appreciated that you helped me out and point me in the right direction and then wishing me luck she wished me luck and that may have been the final blessing in my case in 2020 june had to wear the face mask you're watching this video you might be going to the same test facility or another one, you, hopefully you will not have to wear a face mask by the time you are watching this video, but that's neither here nor there. New normals and such. I met the proctor, Bill, I'm not gonna go into his last name. You can look him up, sweetheart of a man. A sweetheart of a man, a little old man. I don't know if he's actually a pilot himself, I'm sure he was, he works at a freaking airport, so yeah, probably. Uh, anyway, Bill, superstar, what a sweetheart, man. Um, he was really, really nice. Although he did mislead me a little bit, first things first, I said, can I use the bathroom? He said, sure, no problem, go ahead, it's right over there. I looked in the bathroom and I thought to myself, this is going to be a situation. It's not a big bathroom, not a window, no good ventilation. Everybody's kind of just hanging out right outside that bathroom door. I just drank an iced latte and I got to drop deuce. Listen, you got to do what you got to do. I need to pass this exam because I can't spend another 160 bucks trying to worry about this. Plus, I have gigs lined up, man. I need this pilot exam, right? Here's some of the things that Bill told me. Bill, what a sweetheart. He told me that this was a brand new test and he scared the shite out of me. He said, this is a brand new test. We just got this. I've never seen it. I'm like, what the? But it kind of scared me because all of the material that I studied, I mean, we're talking about two years old, three years old. Some of this stuff was like three or four years old. So kind of got a little bit worried for a second there. He told me that I could take a break, although everything I read online told me that I could not take a break. I don't know. I didn't take a break. I basically finished it in about an hour 
and a half, I think. So he told me also that there were going to be four to five answers per question. Now, everything that you're going to read online is three multiple choice answers per question. When he said four to five, I knew my odds just lowered a whole lot. Turns out three answers per question, just like you've been studying online. He clearly has never seen this test. He didn't lie to me about that or else he would have known that it was only three questions. He kind of sat me down, got me set up at my station, offered me some headphones, like uh, some earmuffs, no issues there. I was the only one in the test center, so didn't have to worry about kind of speaking some questions out loud and working some things out. He basically got me set up. He did acknowledge that the computer systems are pretty much crap and they need to be updated and I do confirm that is true. They do run you through like a little pretest, right? Now the pretest is going to make you feel a little stupid. You don't have to take the pretest. It's like 3 to 5 questions or something like that and it's basically just allows you to practice how to answer a question. One of the questions was how many states are there in the United States. Don't get tripped up on, there's 50 states. Don't get tripped up on that, all right? Because I, it hit me and I was under a lot of pressure and he was still sitting there and he was just like making sure I knew how to use the system. And uh, the question came up and I'm like, ha, that's so silly. <laughs> Bill, that's so silly, what a silly question, right? And, and if one of the answers would have said 51, I would have got it wrong. Just being 100% with you. I probably would have got it wrong because I was nervous and I know that there's 50 states, but I would have just answered it incorrectly. Anyway, skip ahead, skip ahead and start taking the actual test, all right? You're gonna get two hours to take the test there's going to be a webcam on there they're going to be watching you i did stretch at one point he thought i was like done or needed a question but i was literally just doing this because one of the questions i was on was boggling my mind so that's kind of my experience with the test center everybody there was fabulous i did pass the test so that probably made things a little bit easier on me and them because if you fail then it's like a weird it's a weird thing, right? Where they're like, oh, better luck next time, man. 160 bucks. How long did I study for the test? What did I study? And was it enough? So I registered for the exam on June 20th at 5.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I took the test on June 26th at 10.30 a.m. We're looking at five days, 16 hours, and 44 minutes. That's the extent of my study period. A lot of that, I was sleeping or working. So really, we're looking at maybe maybe 10 hours of study time, maybe, I don't know. A lot of it was kind of passive studying, but I do not recommend passive studying. Really, really study. So you're gonna wanna watch as many YouTube videos as you can. There are obviously some go-tos. Tony Northrup, Tony and Chelsea Northrup's video is an excellent video. There's another one that I watched, it was like an old guy. It was basically Tony's video but just more boring. So maybe I'll find that guy's thing and I'll link to it. And also the free FAA Part 107 Drone Test Study Guide Answers and Explanations by Better B-Roll. That was an excellent one. I studied, I watched that probably two times. I watched Tony Northrup's video probably two times. And then I looked through the FAA um, Study Guide, which you can find on their website. Do not make this passive studying. There are some things on here you're not going to be able to just wing. I thought I was going to, I watched the Tony Northrup's video, whatever the freak your name is. I watched the video one time and I was like, going to smoke this test. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And honestly, I'm happy I did some follow-up studying because I would not have passed. This is a legit pilot exam, okay? It might be for drones. But as Tony and other people say, they really want you to appreciate the complexity, the difficulty, and the safety that surrounds being an actual pilot, like flying a plane or even flying an airliner where you're responsible for 100 people, you know? Not now, you're responsible for like 20 people, but still, you know, trying times, new normal and such. If you plan on taking the test very, very soon and you don't plan on giving yourself a lot of time to study, here are my tips on what to look out for on the exam that I tripped up on a little bit. Although I was still able to pass, gave me a little bit of trouble. You're going to want to study very heavily on sectional charts and airspace, specifically vertical limitations on the different types of airspace. I got a lot of questions about what is the vertical limit for class C airspace above so-and-so airport. 
If the airspace has an upper and a lower limit, chances are you're going to be able to answer that question pretty easily. But a lot of those sectional charts and a lot of the areas that they're asking these questions about, they do not clearly state an upper and a lower limit. It might just be an upper limit. That's all. So the vertical limitations, you need to understand the terminology that they're going to use. When they say the vertical limitations, do they mean the upper limit or the lower vertical limit? They don't really specify that. So that's something that kind of caught me off guard. You're also going to want to spend a lot of time studying MOA, military operation areas and restricted areas. Not the specific areas themselves, but they're going to ask you undoubtedly a question about a restricted area and the answers are going to look like they could all be right. Spend some time on the MOA and the restricted area section that they give you. It's more about the terminology. In some cases, there is more than one right answer, but there is a answer that is more right than the other ones, which is kind of stupid. They shouldn't do that, but they do it. So study the terminology that they're using. Make sure you cram for this. I only had five days and 16 hours and 44 minutes and I was able to pass. So what did I pass the exam with? So let me fold this back so I don't give you all of my personal information. So I was able to pass my exam with an 83. Now when you get your report, there's going to be this section down here. It's just going to be a bunch of codes. You're going to be able to go to the website that's listed on this report. These won't give you the exact questions that you got wrong, but it'll give you the category for the type of question that you got wrong. And it looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions incorrect. And I passed with an 83. I gave myself five days, 16 hours and 44 minutes to study for this exam. A lot of that time I was either at work or sleeping. We're doing something else, but I was able to pass. So you can expect to pass this also if you just have a little bit of common sense, do a little bit of active studying, cram some of that information in, and then also do some alternative sources. Don't just go to the two videos or three videos I'm going to post here. Just look up general airspace videos on YouTube or cloud types. Oh, that's another one. You're going to want to study cloud types. You want to study cloud types, definitely study your sectional charts, vertical limitations, and restricted areas. Specifically, the terminology that they're using for these, go to the study guide. Read the study guide, okay? And also, I think that's it. I don't remember what else. There were some other questions. Oh, and um, your weather reports, right? Your TAF reports and your METAR reports. Just study those. Go over those once or twice and you're going to be able to figure those out pretty easily. The one thing I did forget when I showed up though with those weather reports was do they drop one zero or two zeros when they're talking about altitude? For whatever reason, I had such a brain fart and I don't know. I didn't see it. So that was my experience in June 2020 going for my drone pilot exam, passing the exam. I mean, it wasn't that difficult. You could definitely do it. Listen, if I could do it, you could do it. All right. So I wish you luck. And again, if you're looking to make money with your drone, this is just something you're going to have to do. Thank you. Tune in next time. I'll see you at the next video. Oh, I almost forgot. Big shout outs to whoever guessed what my son's drawing was. Um, in the last video, in the epic sports ball video, big shout out to my sister Rebecca. She guessed pineapple under the sea. I believe my brother Jerry also guessed that. And there was somebody else. I believe April also guessed correctly. So big shout out to you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.